Hey, in this video I'm going to show you how to make PCBs at home. Uh, it's not really that difficult. I can probably do the whole process in about an hour and a half or so. Uh, all you need for this really is a iron, um, some acid, I'll talk about that more later, uh, your copper board, and you need photo paper. And I've always used this Kodak photo paper. It's just basic gloss photo paper. It's a cheap one. I got it from Walmart. Uh, a lot of the guides online say to use this, this Staples basic gloss photo paper. But I think that that is an older type of product or something. Because when I bought this, it like the whole reason that you use photo paper is because when you put it in water, it dissolves that glossy layer and then that'll help it let go of those traces better and this stuff is more waterproof so it, it stays so when you put it in water it stays uh, thick and it doesn't bend as much and it it doesn't dissolve very well so I've had really terrible results with this and this video is gonna be I'm gonna try and be as detailed as possible so it's probably gonna be longer than it has to be so I mean if it feels like I'm just rambling you can you know skip over those parts but I'm just going to be doing it, I'm just going to be telling you the stuff that I wish I had been told or I wish I could have found early when I first started. So uh, the reason that this method works is because laser printers, um, they use toner instead of ink and toner is actually uh, plastic, little, it's like microscopic dust, plastic dust and it melts it onto the page when it prints and so you can actually iron that toner and get it to stick on copper. In this video I'm going to be doing a double-sided board and so with a double-sided board you have two different layers of copper traces, the top and the bottom. And in Eagle, which is what I use, the red is the top and the blue is the bottom. And if you're doing a double-sided board you're going to need like, I always put these four vias in the four corners because that'll help you line it up later. That's pretty much mandatory. You gotta, unless you have some other way to line the two sides up, because you're going to be drilling holes and they have to match in exactly the same spots. So, um, whenever you're going to print it, you want to configure your printer to print at the darkest toner. Turn off toner saving. Turn off image smoothing. Turn off all of that. And I usually go and put it on photo mode. And then I do manual uh, black and white settings and then the highest contrast and the highest brightness just to make it real dark because you want the thickest amount of toner on there. Okay, so this is the printout afterward. This is the top one and the bottom one. And uh, you want to make sure that you cut like really as close and perfect to the outside lines as you can. It'll just make it easier to line them up. If you mess it up, it's not that big of a deal because we're going to be lining them up with those four corners. So, But it just makes things a lot easier. Alright, so this is the most important part. Uh, whenever you get your PCB from wherever, it will have like a layer over the copper that's supposed to protect it from the air so it won't oxidize and just kind of preserve it or something. And Anyway, especially if you get the from Radio Shack or somewhere that it's on a shelf, I mean, you can feel it. It'll feel real rubbery. Anyway, so what you want to do first is really make sure that this is just smooth. I mean, it should be real smooth when it's done, and it shouldn't feel like rubber. It'll be a pretty big difference. And then after that, after you've acetoned both sides and you're ready, um, you, what you want to get is steel wool or something like that. Sandpaper might work. I'm not sure. Okay, so this is what the uh, copper should look like after you go back and forth with it with the steel wool. You can clearly see like that pattern and you just want to keep it real uniform. You know, you don't have to press down really, really hard. It's, um, and see, this is what it looks like before you, before you scratch it. So this side obviously looks a lot better. And this is, this was the key step for me. So this is one of the new steps that I've been doing and it makes a huge difference so okay so uh, the next part is you want to get your if you're doing a double sided board you want to get your more complicated side with the most traces the most important side and do it first 
And you want to look at the corners and find the straightest corner and then put that on the corner of the board. And then you just put a little piece of tape on each corner. It really doesn't take very much tape. You don't want a whole lot of tape because it'll start melting and stinking when you do the iron and it could mess things up. I don't know. It's not a big deal because as soon as you start ironing this, it'll melt to the, to the copper. So just put like a little piece just to hold it there. All right, so now it's time to iron the board. And you can see I just have a little piece of tape there in the corners. And the trick about this is you want to start right in the middle. And you don't really want to cover the whole thing just right off. You just want to start at the middle and then get it there just long enough for it to stick and really be solid on it. And then move slowly to the corners and push it out. Because you don't want it to kind of bend in certain spots. You don't want it to do anything like that because that will get the dimensions off. You just want it to be flat and just perfect and ironed out just so it's just flat and there's no creases. There's no bending. So, so you start right in the middle with the tip there. And it will stick, you know, within the first couple of seconds. And then you just want to move it to the sides real smoothly and you want to make sure the bottom of your iron is clean so it doesn't stick to the paper because that can cause problems too and another thing to know is that it really this part really doesn't take that long and you can go too long to where it melts on there and the paper starts melting and it just makes it a lot harder to get off um, if you do it in this way, you'll start to see some of the traces start showing through the paper. You can kind of see it a little bit there as you start sticking. So especially with like this really small kind of precise work, you can start seeing the traces showing through the paper. And this is only with the kind of paper I use, so I'm not, I mean it might be a little bit different, so don't get worried. But. Um, it, but again, it really doesn't, this part usually takes me you know no longer than four or five minutes so and you don't have you know you want to put a little bit of pressure but you definitely don't want to put all your weight into it or anything like that and so you can really start to see some of the traces coming through the paper and and you, you might have to experiment with this a couple times if you don't get this part right right off and you peel it and it's not looking good you can just go back to that first step and acetone it acetone all those traces off and then use the steel wool again to clean it all off and then just come back to this and iron it it's not a big deal so. okay so it's been about five minutes and uh... so you can start peeling this off and i usually start with the sides that are already kind of bubbling up and coming off and yeah this looks like this board's come i'm trying to keep the camera on it i keep not paying attention um, so if you just slowly peel it off and you want to peel it to where you're pulling like against the uh, like against the lines like you don't want them to be running this way if you're pulling them from the side you want to be running like against the lines it just makes them stick better that way and so if you just slowly peel it off and see this one is not really it's not uh, sticking that hard so it's coming off really easily and if it's like that then then it's usually going to be really easy and it's all going to stick nice. Let's see. See, this is why I don't like to put a lot of tape. It just gets in the way. And so, there you go. See the rest of this? I didn't even have to pull on it all. It just kind of came off. Uh, yeah, so it looks like this came out good. This should be ready for etching. And you can see, sorry, yeah, see that little dot about half of it's missing that's only one of the ones that you use to line up so it doesn't really matter but you can see because I didn't iron up there very much so but but yeah this is a pretty good pretty good side now it's time for the other side okay so what you're gonna do for the top side is you um, you drill holes in the four corner marker vias and then you'll cut little, you'll poke little holes in the four on this, and then you'll use that to match it up on the back side. And what I use to drill my PCBs is a number 65 uh, tungsten carbide drill bit, and I use a drill press. 
I've never had any problems with with breaking drill bits or anything but um, I know not everybody's gonna have a drill press so I've heard of some people using a, a um, Dremel tool I don't, I'm not sure how well that works but alright so if you uh, shine the light through you should be able to see it through both of those holes if they're lined up right and now you just use the same procedure here for the top of the board so And see, I I, uh, I leave the iron on there just real lightly on the bottom part just to keep it warm while I fill up that tub full of hot water because it's best to transfer it while it's still really hot and make sure that the water is really hot too. There we go. Okay, so now this board has both sides. This is the bottom and now it has the top. So everything transferred pretty well in here so should be ready um, what I usually do at this point is I'll go ahead and cut the board you know here and save this other piece for later okay now for the fun part etching um, basically what happens here is you're gonna put this in an etching solution that'll eat copper away and since some of these parts are covered with the toner the etchant can't get to the copper so the copper won't get eaten away there so it'll eat all this copper that's on the sides but it'll leave the copper that's underneath these lines behind um, if you mess up on little tiny spots or something you can just get a sharpie and draw in those areas and make it real thick and uh, it'll work the same way that the toner does and it'll it'll be just fine that way you don't want to do a whole lot like a long line like that but just little spots are fine um, you're just going to need a container that will fit your PCB. For bigger ones, I usually use the same one that I had the water in. Um, and some people use ferric chloride, which is real nasty and it's kind of hard to get. And it's bad because it's real thick, so you can't see your PCB in it as it's etching. I use hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide, but you can get muriatic acid at any store like Home Depot, Lowe's, maybe even Walmart. And it's only like eight or nine, ten dollars for a gallon or two gallons or whatever. It's real cheap. And you do one part hydrogen perox or one part acid, two parts hydrogen peroxide. And remember to always add acid to water or acid to hydrogen peroxide in this case. And I would use eye protection if I were you. And you know, just don't be stupid. Um. All right, um, when you do this part, you want to make sure that you're in a really well ventilated area because that acid puts off uh, hydrogen chloride fil or fumes, so that stuff doesn't go good in your nose and makes you burn really bad. So I try and use a, a fume hood when I do this stuff. Um, also, sometimes uh, when you have it in here, you'll realize later that you need more acid. As soon as it gets really, really dark and green, it's not really going to etch very much anymore and never add acid or anything to the mix whenever your board is still in it just get it out with your gloves or whatever because if you pour the acid in whenever your board's still in it it'll like dry all this stuff out really bad or it'll eat it away just enough to where it'll uh, all the all the all the traces will just lift up they'll just like dissolve and they'll come out and then your whole thing's pretty much ruined so don't be impatient and you can't really see it etching sometimes, but it usually is. Just be patient. As soon as you start seeing it coming down the edges, then you know it's, it's taken off. So you can see as soon as I put it down in there, it starts eating it away pretty quick. And it's good to, you know, swish it around a little bit. Just agitate it. Um, yeah, so you can see it. It'll eat this mix will eat it pretty quick, a lot faster than ferric chloride. So see this is probably a lot more than I needed. Um also some guides online say that or at least a couple that I've read say that the chemical created from this, the copper um chemical that's made in the reaction. They say that it makes a better etchant, so that really dark green stuff, that, the byproduct of this, they say works better than the actual acid, and that you should just save it and reuse it. 
this is definitely not how it's been for me. I could never get that stuff to etch very well at all, especially not like this much. And also this mix can get a little bit warm when you first mix it. It's not really, really warm, just a little bit, but um, if it's really cold, like if you've had this in your garage or something, you might want to warm it up just a little bit by like running really hot wire, water on the bottom of the container just to warm it up a little bit if it's going slow. But if it changes colors really fast and you can see it etching, then it's usually not a problem. So, okay, uh, you can see it etching now and see how you can see the copper kind of start retreating from the corners and you can see the fiberglass start showing and that's when you know it's really going good. And whenever it's a, the colors, this clear light green color, it's still working really good. It has to get really dark and black but you can see those little clouds of copper coming off as it reacts. You just want to keep staring and it's only been like two and a half minutes or something so it really edges pretty quick. Well maybe five minutes but so it's going pretty good here. Alright so now you can see the that it's almost done here. You can't really tell if the bottom's done or not but just wait for the top and then flip it over and usually go at the same rate so just one little spot in the middle there okay so now that the board is done etching and all the copper is gone you can take it out and you want to be careful like bringing it in a, in a metal sink or, or anything because those drips if the etching solution drips on anything it'll stain it it'll eat away a little bit so just be careful of that so after this is all washed off it should be good and now you just have to clean the toner off okay so this is the last step just get your acetone and hard to do this with one hand but you just start cleaning all the toner off and you should start seeing the copper come out from underneath so after you do this, you should start seeing all the copper come out. And so this is what your uh, PCB should come out to look like after you've acetoned all the all the toner off. And see, even the text comes out pretty clearly, and that's pretty fine, you know. So no breaks, all looks pretty good. So if you take your time and do it right, it's really not that difficult and makes things a lot easier than trying to do you know stuff on a breadboard or make a final project and uh, at this point you just want to take your drill bit and go and draw all your little holes oh and a tip on this part see like on all the pieces that are the same part like this is all for a chip and these two rows are for this LED thing for each part you want to make sure that you drill the holes from the same side so make sure you drill like down on the same side for all of them just because like if you do some of them on this side and some on the other side they could they could be off by just a little bit and that can make it really hard trying to put your part in because the pins can be off of just a tiny bit and another good idea is to make your pads just a little big so when you drill through there even if it's off by you know a quarter of a millimeter or half a millimeter it'll still come out you know close enough to where when you solder it'll make up for it so there you go uh, thanks for watching